It's Dead or Alive time! Hello and welcome to another figure review. Today we're gonna have a look at the Dead or Alive 2 Ayane figure from uh, Epoch, which is a really, really old figure from like 2001, but I've been enjoying me some Dead or Alive 6 recently. That was like released uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. But uh, yeah, that really has rekindled my love for... Uh, not while well, I always love the series, but I, I kind of wanted some more figures. And the Epoch line, it, it, is a, it is a kind of rare thing, but I did find Ayane on eBay by some eBay uh, German eBay seller. So I didn't have to pay a lot of shipping. And I was like, all right, let's have a look at what Epoch I had to offer in 2001. Alrighty, a tiny bit of assembly her ribbon is uh, kind of loosely on there and I'm just gonna give you a spin around real quick because I'm probably gonna have to take the ribbon off to take a closer look at her because it's really just as I said wobbly and not in there so tiny. So overall look of the figure, it is the DOA 2 design, that's one of the things that really drew me in and uh, even looking at the pictures I thought like okay this is DOA 2 through and through. Now let's have a look at the size before I even go further. She stands at about 21 centimeters to the top of her head, which means we're going up to eight, almost eight and a half inches, eight four, eight point four inches tall. Now, uh, as I mentioned, the face sculpt, you can say, uh, maybe you would say it looks a little bit derpy. Uh, it seems like one eye is a tiny bit bigger than the other one. But I still believe uh, the paint job on the eyes is very, very clean. Which unfortunately is not on everything in here. But, uh, well, the nose looks kind of weird. But overall, again, design-wise, I, I stick to the fact that this, this is really Dead or Alive accurate. Dead or Alive 2 accurate, that is. Now the hair, there's a ton of shading in it. And that's a, that's a theme for the figure. And that's really something that got me into it. I love the shading that goes throughout it. It looks awesome. What doesn't look so awesome is her bandana that already misses the mark over there a little bit. Well, actually quite a lot. And uh, the back part of her of her front hair also has some, looks like damage to it. Looks like it's peeling off over there. It wasn't completely painted. And also this part of her bandana, kind of like the ribbon, has a completely different color on the edge and once again I don't I, I don't think that was intentional because it just looks weird now for the overall look also have some uh, some more shading in the skin tone and a really nice skin tone and we got the fingernails also painted on there which I mean they're okay could be worse could be better so somewhere in the middle now, looking at the middle of the figure, we got them big boobies, which obviously is a big feature of the Dead or Alive series. What they completely screwed up, though, is... Yes, there are some nips. You can see some nips, but... Uh, uh, why are they up there? Like, honestly, and I, I mean, I don't know. Like, the boobs are kind of pushed up, but still, I, I think the nip placement is kind of questionable. But moving on from that, I actually not just want to give you a perv look into her cleavage, but... I want to focus on the lines from the blue, well, kind of like the purplish blue that goes over to the skin tone. It's not the cleanest, unfortunately. I have some small slips here and there. And, uh, oh, by the way, the entire figure is porcelain. It's sturdy stuff. It's not plastic. So that also uh, makes it a little bit more special, but also a lot more frail. So I'm really grabbing on tightly onto this one with both hands now looking at the yellow in her belt moving on to that we have a little bit more of a shiny black greenish going on there but uh, the belt looks overall okay it does have some bigger slips going on but uh, the worst crime to me is like once again the typical problems I mean I talked about it a lot recently for whatever reason it keeps popping up they are trying to cover up dark blue purplish with yellow Yellow does not cover up dark colors so well, so it does have some some nasty spills. They're, they're not the worst. It's small things that the more the more you pile on might become a bigger thing because like, for example, the butterfly, once again, uh, is pretty ugly. Uh, they, they have the mold on there, they, they kind of made the outline of it and they painted over it and it really falls apart, especially over here. 
It's one of these things that I don't even notice it that much on camera because my screen is so small, but as I'm looking over the camera and I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh yeah, there's that. Then we got the red line going on, also same thing. It is clean for the most part, but then there's some slips here and there, which uh, are, are, to me are forgivable. Then it's Pansu time! Yes, we got Pansu in there. It's just like regular white Pansu, but that's like Dead or Alive. They all have... Uh, I mean, it was Dead or Alive 2. There was only white Pansu. Now in Dead or Alive 6, that's truly next gen, where you can change the Pansu with uh, with the click of a button. But once again, ha! Huh, button! But that's, that's not the button we're talking about. Down to the stockings. The shading on these. The shading on the stockings are just uh, phenomenal. And it, it really makes it stand out more from the from the regular outfit, which you still have shading in it, and by the way, I, I mentioned the shading, but yeah, look at it, there is a lot of it going on throughout the entire outfit, and especially in the stockings, making it look super nice as we go down to her boots, same thing, there's shading in it, paint job from the red to the, uh, well, it's more like a purplish, more like a, I don't know, what, what's, I'm a little bit colorblind, so I'm really having trouble to to, to call this one. It's kind of like a red, but it's kind of going over into the purple, so... Yeah, you be the judge of that, but anyway, I mean, paint job for this one... I mean, it's actually pretty clean. Don't really see any slips on that. And uh, I just want to have another look at the ribbon real quick without the figure on it. This one actually looks very nice. Once again, shading. The mold of it is great. And uh, just wish it would hold on a little bit better. I mean, but finally, I should also show you the base very nicely. I mean, it's a plain black base, but it's nicely done. It is sturdy, it is heavy, and it does have these little things on the bottom so we don't scratch your, uh, your display case. So that's really welcome. And it's gonna bring me to the final thoughts of this Epoch Ayana figure. What do I think about this one? I mean, it's always kind of hard to tell. To give you uh, an idea, this is a, this is an old, kind of hard to find figure, which will usually cost you a little bit, a little bit much. Uh, I paid 200 bucks for this, and so uh, first of all, my personal opinion as a huge DOA fan, I gotta say yes, this this was worth the money to me. But uh, if you're not a DOA fan, eh, I would say like 150, 150 would still worth it because. I like the pose, I like the design, I like the look, it really catches the DOA 2 designs of the figures. The paint job, the shading in it is amazing, although the paint job does fall apart in some spots as it's not the cleanest with like the butterfly and some stuff on the belt. But overall, it's small things that I can forgive. Gonna leave it at that, recommend it uh, at 150 and for all fan, probably worth a little bit more. That's it, final verdict. Done. That's gonna do it guys. As usual, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget if you enjoyed this review, hit it up with a like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for more figure reviews, gameplay stuff, and whatever I got any once.